It's a session four of God's awesome plan. And today I want to look at the person of Mary. Luke tells us that when Elizabeth was six months pregnant with John the Baptist, the same angel that had visited Zechariah visited Mary and told her that she would have a child. Now we know nothing about Mary other than that she lived in Nazareth and that she was betrothed to Joseph. The angel visited her and said this, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. That's Luke one twenty eight. Over the years, these words have sort of been interpreted to say that Mary was such a godly person that God really favoured her and that's why he chose her. But that's, the scripture says nothing about that. She is highly favoured not because of who she is. She's highly favoured because God chose her to bring his son into the world. Now the status of Mary has been an issue over many years and there's a doctrine in the Roman Catholic Church called the Immaculate Conception. How this doctrine came to be is because Jesus was without sin and yet we know that every human being born is born with a nature that is sinful. How could Jesus be born of a sinful woman? And so the answer they came up with was that Mary herself was born without sin. Therefore, she was able to give birth to Jesus. How it came about that Mary was born without sin, they say that God granted her the grace of Jesus and that protected her from the sinful nature that we all inherit. I feel a part of the power of the story of Jesus coming to earth is that he came to a very normal person someone who is just as capable of sinning as you or I are. He inherited every possibility to sin, but because he had the very nature of God, he didn't. Hebrews 4.15 reads this, For we do not have a great high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who's been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. If Jesus is born, of someone without sin, therefore he's being born without the contamination of sin, that takes away the power of his choice to live in complete disobedience. It also says that those of us who are born with the contamination of sin will not be able to live in obedience to God. And we know that there's a battle that rages within us between our sinful nature and God. But the more we allow the life of Jesus to live within us, the less we want to disobey. Okay, enough of the theology. What did it mean for Mary to have the favour of God? Well, firstly it meant the threat of divorce and scandal. It meant that they had to flee with their baby into a foreign country. It meant that she was often puzzled by her son's behaviour, even at one stage thinking that he might have gone a bit mad and she needed to take him home. It would mean watching him suffer the most cruel torture that human beings have ever invented. And yet Mary knew that her son was special. Mary was open to whatever God wanted of her. And so Mary is remembered throughout the world today. Luke 1 38. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Mary lived her life not necessarily understanding everything, but trusting that God knew what he was doing. She was the means by which salvation was brought into this world.